Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA card for this Saturday from a betting perspective. And for those of you that have been following along these videos, um, you know that it's going to be a very contrarian approach uh, to wagering. And uh, it's just the way I do things, the way I've been betting on anything since pretty much as long as I've been a uh, been a grown up, <laughs> grown up meaning uh, someone who's a, a thinking person. Um, the way I analyze MMA betting is the exact same way that I analyze uh, sports betting, which is the same way I analyze um, investing in stocks, which is, for those of you who know me, obviously the, the, what's responsible for 99% of my net worth uh, over the last 20, 25 years. Um, so let's go over for, again, five to 10 minutes Again, the process and the philosophy behind betting on sports uh, and betting on MMA in gen it, it specifically. As you guys know, I do DFS uh, as well, daily fantasy sports. And remember, the overarching presumptions for you betting on daily fantasy sports is exactly opposite to what you have to presume when you're betting on the actual fights and just betting on sports. When, when you play DFS, you are presuming that the um, that the lines created by Vegas are accurate, or at least somewhat accurate. And the, the, the props that are carded by, by sports books, um, which are determined by the betting public, are somewhat accurate. And what you do is, in DFS, is you take these, these lines and you take these props, and then you kind of make projections on how fighters are going to score based on those, um, based on those lines. But the presumption is that those are accurate. And the way you obtain an edge in DFS is by, you know, uh, being able to project well off of those numbers and also being an expert in, in lineup construction, meaning how to put those good plays kind of together, um, kind of like the stock market, right? I mean, a lot of people can come up with decent stocks, but how to put them in a portfolio together requires quite a bit of work. Um, so any in any case, that's the, the big presumption with DFS. Now, when it comes to betting on sports, right, whether that means also investing in a stock or investing in a basketball game or an MMA fight or whatever, the, the overarching presumption is the opposite. If you're going to be betting on a, on a sporting event where you're laying, you know, $1.20 on each side or you have a 60 cent vig uh, that you have to pay one way or the other, you are, by definition, presuming that the line is wrong. Right. I mean, if you are if you presume the line is accurate, then you literally can't win ever. Right. Now, that's not to say, by the way, that you just shouldn't bet on the fights uh, if you don't have an edge. Right. Now, that that might be kind of anathema to to financial advice. But remember, this is not just financial advice. I mean, if you want to you want to bet on something to get yourself some more entertainment or to make it more interesting. I think that's in a, in a, in a way healthy, um, just make things a little bit more fun, but make no mistake. I mean, if you presume that these lines are accurate and you're betting anyway, you're by definition, you know, you're by definition giving up money and throwing money away. So, so what do you do? So how, how do you handle that? You know, if you want to bet on these things where, you know, bet on, on sports, you have to presume that the line is off in some way. So how, how do you do that? I mean, that, that's an incredible leap. That's an incredible, actually, bit of ego that you have to <laughs> that you have to have is to presume that of the millions of dollars being being bet on these events, that somehow, some way, you know more than the sum of the intelligence of the people betting on it. Um, so. If that didn't depress you enough, if you still want to go ahead and, and bet, given that assumption that you have to make, let, let's talk about how to do that. What I've found and what the, the generator of my success is to try to figure out what of what goes into the line that's been made. In other words, how much of the line that they distribute how much of the line that's out there is based on the public just being biased to a certain fighter or being biased to a certain outcome or a certain event being more something people want to root for a little bit more um, to, to, to make the analogy to, a stock, to, to the stock market 
what types of stocks are just kind of like loved in general? What kind of stocks are a really easy story to tell, you know? And, and when you have a price that's been put out there, you can, you can make a, a good psychological assumption that probably a decent amount of what goes into one of the sides of that doesn't really have much to do with the actual outcome, right? It doesn't have that much to do with the data that would support the, you know, whatever result comes out. And if you can get a handle on the psychology behind you know, what's expected of these sides, you can, you can, in my opinion, get a decent edge, even, even if you don't know exactly you know, which side, which side is, is wrong or right with respect to the data. Okay. And so when we go ahead and analyze the MMA fights, what we're basically doing is taking a very contrarian approach. We are looking at these fights and say, okay, what is the easy story to tell? What is the, the most obvious results that people are going to predict that might not have anything to do with, with, with data, with, which might not have anything to do with, with reality, but it's what people just kind of want to bet. And if you can fade that side of it, I think that you're at least getting some kind of intrinsic edge, okay, uh, uh, in, in these types of things. Um, that was probably a little longer than I expected. And if you've been watching these videos for the last several months, you're probably sick of hearing it. But again, I have to cater to in some degree to the people that are watching this for the first time. And as we go through these fights, you'll, you know, you, you'll start to become comfortable with, with my approach, and uh, if you if you tail these types of fights, great, uh, you, you'll get a fun sweat. But listen, I don't want to get too mushy about this. But if you if you apply what we how we if you apply this analysis to other forms of gambling, I think it's going to make you a better gambler. It's going to make make you a more I don't know more astute student of of everything, sort of. Um, and I think it'll just kind of challenge you, your, your, your brain a little bit. Anyway, um, so let's take a look. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird card because you have many fighters that no one's heard of. But over the course of the week, I've been able to kind of get a sense for what narratives are, you know, the kind of the coolest narratives uh, to jump on. And we're going to try to fade those in some way. So let's just go fight by fight and 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 go through this and you'll see how I kind of approach this. All right, so first fight, uh, well, actually, before we do that, sorry, I have to go over, not the disclaimers, but what I'm going to be doing. There are 12 fights and I'm going to be betting every single fight. Um, I'm going to make one bet per fight and it's going to be the same amount each fight. Now, again, that's not exactly the greatest bankroll strategy, but that's just what I do. Um, and uh, it's, I'm not going to have any bigger opinion on one over the other. There's going to be 12 fights, and I'm literally going to be betting one unit, whatever that means to you, um, on each fight. Now, with respect to, to disclosures, it is going to be 180. So 180 on each fight times, so 180 times 12. And this is exactly what I'm going to be betting and not going to be changing. Anyway, um, first fight, Tiara versus uh, Santo. So Tiara is a you know young, up-and-coming grappler. Uh, submission artist he actually had uh, uh, a really good performance in his last fight where people were on him and you know he, he's a minus 1100 um so no one's going to be betting the 1100 so there's no real edge in in the money line here um but the, the thing i'm hearing just a lot is that you know it, Tiara just by submission you know if you're going to play tiara you may as well just play tiara by submission um, and you're hearing some tiara in the first round or something like that. So any prop or any way to approach this fight that involves tiara by submission is just going to be probably inherent bad value. So what we're going to probably do is we're going to do one of two things. We're going to either play Tyra by decision, or maybe we'll try tiara by knockout. Okay. Cause one, one, interesting way to approach these fights is that if someone's such an enormous favorite um sometimes they'll just try to do something that maybe you know they haven't done before uh so maybe if tyra gets Aguiar 
you know, uh, to the ground, instead of going with submission, maybe he goes for the ground and pound KO. But I think that the probably the smartest thing to do is just to go uh, Tiara by uh, by decision. So let's take a look and see what that lines those lines are. Two ways to play this. Number one is you could play the over one and a half rounds, which um, is probably the safest thing to do, right? But I think that it's more fun to probably play Tiara by decision. So Tiara by decision plus one seventy five. Um, that's what we're going to play. So Tiara wins by decision um, plus one eight for one eight. Okay. Um, okay, moving on. Next fight. Junyoung Park versus Dennis Tolulian. So um, this was this is kind of a tough one because I have heard some some uh, opinions on both sides and and this is what happens on a card like this. People try to look for the underdog to play. In other words, even if they don't like any underdogs, they feel as though that they have to just take a couple of underdogs. And Tolulian seems to be kind of the underdog of choice here. Um, people remember his last fight where he, um, where he, uh, he, he knocked out Jamie Pickett in the second round. Um, so it looks as though Tululian's going to be that quote unquote live dog of the day. Um, but just because, you know, there are 12 fights and just because you want to pick another dog is very possible that they all lose. So I think Tululian, the Tululian side is probably kind of the, kind of the uh, the square underdog play. So we're going to take the park side of this. Um, and to avoid the, uh, the, uh, the recency bias, what we're not going to do is play park um, by submission because that's how he got his last one. So what we're going to probably do is either play just park inside the distance or park... Um, or park by decision. So let's take a look at some of these lines here. Um, park by KO plus 400. That's not bad. Park by submission is plus 300 is very fair, I have to say. Um, but we're, we're going to go with park by decision here. So park by decision for 180. And we're here. Okay. All right, uh, moving on, you have Ji Young Kim versus Mandy Baum. I, I kind of knew where I was headed here right from the beginning of the week. So you have Mandy Baum, who, all I will say is this, like, if, if you look through all the content from the beginning of the week until the end, all you hear is Mandy Baum is just the worst. You hear Mandy Baum here whatever i mean okay fair enough but you have ji young kim who i mean she's lost five in a row too or three in a row also so so why is why would kim be like a favorite over over mandy bomb here the problem here is and this is is kind of weird is that is that it's still 280 okay this is one of those weird things that if it was kim like minus 150 I probably would take Bob, but because it is minus 280, um, who is really taking him at 280? So I, I'm actually very, I, I think that that for some reason that the Kim side of this is just probably kind of a lock, you know, like this is just such a wide line in general. So what we're going to do is just, is take Kim inside the distance. Cause these, 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 these women fighters, they don't, they, they, they are always, they're inside the distance props are always really poor. And if you could ever get one of these fights to finish, you're going to get really, really good odds. And and Kim, one thing about her and Mandy Bomb, they both they both throw volume, especially Kim. I mean, Kim is throwing quite a bit of volume, and Mandy Bomb has absorbed quite a bit. So if you could get Kim, you can get a finish out of her, you probably get some really good odds. So now here's a question of how greedy you want to get here. So you could play him by KO at plus 500. And that's really, really, I mean, that's a, that, those are big odds. But, but just for fun, 
I wonder if I can get him in a round. Like she could just grind her out and then then win in round three at sixteen hundred. That would be so sick. Um, but we're not gonna do it. We're we're just gonna we're just gonna play Kim by TKO or KO plus five hundred. And that should be that should be enough juice to get you something to root for. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on. Um you have mm, Sung Guk Choi versus Hyung Sung Park. Um all right. So what we're what I'm hearing here again is that nobody knows too much about either of these guys, except the people that did a little bit of tape work. They're saying that Park is the guy with the big finishing upside. He's the one with 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 the power, you know. And if if if, if Choi wins, I mean, maybe you know he can get some grappling or any something like that. But Park is the one with all the finishing upside. So one thing we're not going to do is play Park inside the distance or any der derivative thereof, thereof, because especially when people are just looking for any kind of info. They'll, especially on fighters that you don't see too often, or if at all, they'll just jump on the first take that they see and just kind of get married to it. So I think that every prop with, with Park inside the distance is going to be really, really poor. So what we're going to do, just, I mean, just for fun, right? Uh, we are going to take Choi. Now, if you really want to be pure, you, I mean, you could play take Choi plus 160, or if you really want, you could take Choi, you know, inside the distance. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're, we're just going to take Choi plus the 160. So Choi plus the 160, and that looks good enough. Oh, so what's the end date? Oh, so let me look around. It's fine. Yeah, that's what happens. It doesn't like it when I... Uh, it doesn't like it when I, um, whatchamacallit, when I play, uh, when I have Zoom on and I'm, I'm logged in. But we'll, 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 we'll bet all these after, I promise. Right. Um, so Chung Choi uh, plus uh, 160. All right, moving on. Uh, Nakamura versus uh, uh, Kazama. So what you have here is is Nakamura, who is not only a, a world championship wrestler, but also has KO upside. Um, and, you know, he's minus four, minus 430. Um, there's only a couple of ways that you can play this. Number one, again, when you have a situation like this where everybody's kind of on the same side, you could either play Kazama plus the 350. You're asking for it, though, because, I mean, you're doing with it. One of the reasons I don't like to do this is that you're getting paying 85 cents a big. Um, but I think that, I don't know, I think Nakamura is part of most people's parlays. They're putting him in. So the juice is being priced up because of that. Um, I'm really inclined to try this in the Kazama plus 350. The only other thing I might do is go back to my old faithful and play Nakamura in the aforementioned favorite round round two so let's just see that that's what we're going to do we're going to say this if we can get nakamura at in round two at a better price than kazama plus 350 we'll try that otherwise we will try um uh kazama plus 350 uh look at that it's exactly the same boy oh boy so nakamura round two or kazama plus the money line um or <laughs> or we could play round three plus 800 well wow, that's that's tough man how do we do that how do we get Kazama to survive two rounds and also be bad enough after surviving the two rounds to get knocked out round three Well, I'll tell you what, um, just, just, yeah, we'll try Nakamura around to plus 350. Okay. 
Jung Young Lee versus Jai. Um, this is very similar to me to the 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 Kim bomb fight. Not because they're the same type of fighters or anything like that, but this line here. Um, Lee is being priced in, in in a way that that people are are saying, boy, it seems like a seems like kind of a fair line. Um, the one thing about Ja he is that his road to um to victory here, this is what I'm hearing, is mostly about grappling. Okay, so this is another case where you could play someone like like Jung Young Lee in like the later rounds. Um, Cause what I am hearing is Jung Young Lee is kind of like a maniac, right? So he's a maniac. If he's going to get there, he's going to get there in the first round. So I think that again, Lee in round two is probably going to get some extra big. So maybe like a, if, if you can get like plus 800 or something like that in round two, uh, I think Lee is probably a good play or, maybe Ja just on the straight money line. So these are the these are the these are what we're this is what we're between. Can't play you can't play Lee in the first, in round one. That's just the one that's way too too big of a of a prop that people are all over. So there's probably negative value there. There's probably negative value in just straight him by inside the distance. So I think we have to either play him at plus you know in, in a round or Ja he by you know uh, either by decision or the money line here. So let's just take a look at the odds and see what appeals to us. Um, let's see round props. Lee round two plus 400. Uh, we're going to go back to it then. We're going to go Jung Young Lee round. Boy, it's, it's, it's so tempting just to go the round one though. I mean, usually you get the jump from round two, round one to round two, a much bigger jump. Here you're not really getting that. So that being the case, um, boy, oh boy, maybe we should just go round two, uh, round one. This is really tough. This is a tough decision. But you know what? Just just to be part of the brand, we'll, we'll stick with these round twos. I just feel as though this this round one is just is just overpriced somehow. It's, I'm hearing too much of it, so I just can't do it. I, um. All right, so this one is going to be really ugly. So Jekka against uh, Jubilee. Uh, so this is what we have. You have a pick em fight that you have nobody taking Jubilee. I don't get it. I just don't get it. You, 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 I, whether it's DFS or betting or whatever it is, it's a pick em fight. And actually, you have Jubilee. It's like actually a minus 115. And if you poll all the experts... I can't. I haven't found someone to take Jubilee at all. So we're gonna do it. Um, just Jubilee minus the one fifteen. It's just it's a stupid looking bet. So like you say, like I say in the movies, it's just so stupid. It just might work. So we'll just take Jubilee and fade fade the universe um, for one eighty. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, Kishohita versus Adam Fugit. Um, you have a minus 300. Uh, so again, we're probably not going to take the plus 260 here. Um, we're going to just do the same type of thing, I believe, is 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 just analyze what people have been saying. And they're saying that, to, to, that, that, that Kinoshita has all the finishing upside. He's just much better. Uh, let's take him inside the distance. So what we're going to do is to get a little bit of juice. We're going to play uh, Kinoshita by decision. This is one side that really nobody is on at all. So there's probably some good inherent value in that. Okay. Du Hu Choi versus Kyle Nelson. Well, this one to me is easy. Okay. So you have Du Hu Choi, you know, it's, it's just everybody, you know, was really, really high on this dude. He went to the Korean army for three years. And he's come, coming back against Kyle Nelson, who basically has no striking defense, who just has nothing to offer. 
And they're trying to set up Duhu Choi so that he can come back from the Korean Army with an easy win. And for some reason, it's only minus 190. So we are going to take Kyle Nelson here. The only question is whether we want to play him plus 160 or maybe him by KO. Let's take a look at this. So him by KO is only plus 330. But the question is, how does how does he win other than the KO? Um, probably no other way. So we're going ahead. We're going to go ahead and take Kyle Nelson by KO at the 180. Okay. Now, just a couple of more, right? Okay, Marcin Tybora versus Vlagi Ivanov. I'm extremely confident in this one, right? So normally you have heavyweights who, and, and when you have heavyweights, these fights usually finish really, really early. Um, but in this fight, you have two guys who, based on their recent uh, logs, have put up a lot of decisions. Um, so you're not getting any of that normal, you know, heavyweight inside the distance money. So we're, we're going to take a shot at that. Okay? We're going to take a shot. At these guys who have not finished anybody in the last, like since the Eisenhower administration, that one of them just finishes the other one. Um, so we're either going to play the fight inside the distance or maybe Tybura himself uh, inside the distance or around. So we're going to take a look at the odds here and see what we get. Probably just going to take the fight inside the distance. Um, let's see. Hold on. Where we go? Where did he go? Okay. It's like uh, you could you need to play the under for plus 190 or just... Fight goes decision. Wait, where's that's my regular fight does not fight does not go plus one fifty. That looks good to me for a heavyweight fight. Okay, just a couple of more. You already have like eight eight bets that have no chance to win. Daun Young versus Devin Clark. Oh, it doesn't get any easier than this. You know, Dao Jung, it is, he was on a roll. You know, he's 27, 28 years old. He was blasting through people. Then he ran into uh, Dustin jo jo Jacoby, which is very, very reasonable that he would get KO'd there. Now he gets a get-right spot against Devin Clark, who's, what is he, 36, 37 years old, kind of on his way out. He's just shown nothing the last couple of couple of fights. Um, so this is basically a setup fight for Dao Jung. So what we're going to do, we are going to take Devin Clark. Devin Clark plus 205. No problem for 180. Um, and then in the main events, you have Derek Lewis versus Sergey Spivak. Um, so we, we have a situation where it's extremely binary, according to everybody. Either Spivak can take him down and, 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 you know, take him down round and pound and take him down again. Um, or Derek Lewis gets that, that miracle KO shot. Okay. So we are, one thing we are not doing is Derek Lewis by KO. Right? If there's any value, it would be actually Derek Lewis just did general, but we're not playing Derek Lewis by KO. We can't actually, I don't think, play Derek Lewis himself either because the line is so close to his Derek to his KO prop. Um, so it's got to be uh, a Sergei Spivak. Uh, and what you're getting is a really strong inside the distance prop. Uh, well, strong, it's like minus 800. So there's only two things I'm going to do here. We're either going to play Spivak in a round or Spivak by decision. And if it's Spivak in a round, it can't be like the first two rounds because I think there's like too much, too much, uh, too much action there. So it's either going to be Spivak round three, or because that's a just uncomfortable enough, um, or Spivak by decision. So let's take a look and see what these lines are. All right, so Spivak by decision is plus six 
50. Ooh, we, that is uh that's, that's really juicy. And it's something that people think has no chance of happening, which is, which is what I like. Spivak round three itself is plus 900. So what is more likely in my opinion, Spivak in round three, or Spivak round two plus 550. See, this is the kind of the, this, this is the, um, this is the, the bump that I was expecting in that other fight from round one to round two. Um, for what was it? The uh, not the Jekka fight, whichever the one it was, that it was plus 200 in the first round. Oh, Lee, then up to plus 400 in the second, I think it was. Um, this is what I expected the plus 165 to 150 to 550. So it's either going to be Spivak round two or Spivak by decision. Can Derek Lewis really go a full five rounds? I mean, he could. I mean, he could, but I don't know which one I'm going to do here. Spivak round two or Spivak by decision. Let's go. Boy, oh boy, it's going to be four in the morning. So you may as well make it to 430 in the morning. Let's go Spivak by decision, which really has no chance. So since it has no chance, we're going to try it. Um, Spivak by decision plus 180. Can I do that or am I going to let the round two get me? Listen, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to go the round two. Not this, not doing this one. We're going to do Spivak round two for 180. I'm back and forth. I don't know what to do. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Spivak round two for 180. So to review, Spivak for round two for, for, for 180. Devin Clark plus 205. Uh, Tybora does not go decision to the, the distance. Kyle Nelson plus 330 to win by KO. Kinoshita by decision. Boy, that has no chance. Plus 215. Jubilee minus 115. No shot. Jung Lee round two plus 400. Nakamura round two plus 300. Shenzhou Choi plus 160. And those, the other two that I had mentioned earlier, um, what was it? Tiara by decision. Was that what it was? Um, and uh, I think it was, was it park round two? Something like that. Uh, that will do it. Uh, this seems like, I actually might not go over 12 this week. This week, we're probably going to go three and nine. Hopefully that the three we win are going to be three of the long shots. And uh, give us a good sweat. That'll do it. Good luck, everybody.